let's see here, thoughtlessly towards their fellow beings, like the Korath, <laughs> right? Nothing's here. Okay, now we got to go back. So the interesting part is, they said, oh, we don't have any crafts that are capable of landing on gas giants. Oh, really? Because I remember the remnant do, and I remember that I have one, the Puff. And I could bring the Puff over to here if I wanted to. And I wonder if that's, uh, I wonder if, see, like, that makes sense to me. It's like, oh, you need a, you know, a crap that can land on gas giants. It's like, I'm gonna have to buy one here, as opposed to just, like, getting it from the remnant. Oh, here we go. After you enter the system, you prepare to broadcast your first message with the Quark Translator. Hello, I am Captain Aaron Schatz, here to make contact. Stoic. Greetings, strangers. I seek to help you, or I come in peace. No, no one ever says I come in peace. I'm here to make contact. Boom. You notice the trans that the translator starts to flash a sequence of lights, and you point it towards your ship's communication device. For a minute, nothing happens at all. After some time, a wave of movement passes through all ships in the system, and the communication channel opens from the space station. Colors rush over your display, a mix of yellow and green. You point your translator towards the flashing lights and hope it is able to pick up whatever these aliens are saying to you. Welcome, world traveler. We greet you in our home space. The voice is smooth and synthetic, lacking in any discernible emotion. The colors stop before rushing over your screen again. What is your intentional intention goal here? Um, I, no, I want to help when you're stranded ships. I don't want to make peaceful contact. Yeah. Again, a long pause. Your intention goals are welcome. Please dock to the capital station. Along the message comes a small map of the station with the docking ports highlighted. I have done it. See? Say what you actually want to do. Don't be like, I come in peace. Because everyone's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. We're going to attack you now. Every movie, it's like, oh, yeah, we come in peace. And they immediately attack you. Thanks to the map, you are easily able to dock with the station. Your airlock opens, and you enter an environment like nothing you've ever seen before. There are no hallways like you would see in a human space station. Instead, tubes full of fog, some of which even ascend vertically, appear to be the only way of getting around. A crowd of beings gathered in front of your airlock, each flashing a multitude of colors. A group of five floats in front of the crowd, and the middle one starts pulsating into calm tones. Welcome, outer being, to our capital. We are the Incipius. It stops of awaiting an answer. Greetings, Incipius. I am a human. I'm going to say that, because that's basically the... Your translator begins rapidly flashing. The Incipius seem to respond to this. Movement and colors begin to diffuse through the crowd-like wa like waves. The speaker continues. You are the first outer being that ever communicated with us. Are you the only outer being out there? I'm just going to say, no, there are others too, or the galaxy is full of other beings. No, there are others too. Another wave goes through the crowd. So there are more, but far stranger... How could we help you? I'm going to tell them about the stranded ship and how I want to help them. Another wave goes through the crowd, but this time you notice an overflow in green tones. So, they are still alive. We shall give you access to our ships, so that you may enter the air planet they have taken refuge in. Do note, though, that they cannot jump between system places, not like your own ship. We hope to question you more on another future time. The five float away, but the crowd continues staring at you, probably out of interest. Wow! Now I have access. That was a quick way of accessing. Is there anything on the job board? No. Now we gotta, like, uh, see what's going on here. What's in the shipyard? There's a Garo. Let's see. Transport and a medium warship. 4.5 million. It's got shields. I mean, uh, you know, uh, this might be able to take on the Gegno pretty easily. It's got shields, turrets, stagnant. I mean, we're going to have to check out what's going on here. Okay, so we got a transport. Wait, does this one... Gas class shield. Okay, that must be it. Gas class shield. S liquid class shield. We have to see what that is. Gas class shield. Okay. We're going to check what that is in a second. 
blah blah blah. Let's see, the completion of the pond has caused a huge increase in travel between the station and Redius. Designers from Alto Shipyards quickly saw an opportunity to so the first transport ship, and this one's a light freighter. The need arose that can carry large amounts of material and supplies in orbit when the Nimbus right insufficient, the Nimbus the Nimbus Sirit. Why is it like the same as like Earth <laughs> cloud formations? Ah, whatever. What are you going to do? So they got uh, Nimbo Stratus, of course. Yep. Interesting ship design. Brown. Utility ship. What is a utility ship? Mining. Okay. The Nimbus itself. And then they're Garrow. I don't understand that. And then everything is Nimbus or Nimbo. Whatever. Yeah, it's not that big compared to mine. Mine's like three times the size of that. But, you know, it's fairly big for us, you know, like a small little fairing thing. Let's, uh, let's see what the outfits are, because that's the interesting part. Okay, plasma discharger. Started to mine asteroids. As a result, this mining tool seems to be more advanced than their general, yet it is still not comparable to the efficiency of human weapons. The discharger itself shoots bolts of high-density plasma that split up into smaller particles after some time. Because of the plasma infuser, the fire rate is exceptional, but the energy uses is severe. Let's see here. Shield damage per second. Mineable damage, so it's, you know, good for mining. High range. Horizon grap. Ooh, grappler. I like that. The pinnacle of incipient technology is represented by this mining utility. Perfected over the centuries, this tractor beam is far beyond anything the incipient has developed so far. The beam's name originates from the first prototypes developed before the advent of space flight, which gathered minerals by pulling asteroids from their homeworld's rings into the atmosphere. Oh. Tractor beam, huh? Hmm. I want so the the uh, coalition had tractors. This is going to be interesting. All right, so now I have access to like a tractor beam. What else we got here? A stagnation beam. The stagnation beam is one of the few technologies the Incipius that surpasses anything humanity has made thus far. In fact, the first prototypes were built before the Incipius even dreamed of space travel. The weapon's origins lie in giant reactors that were constructed to pull asteroids out of their home planet's orbit, providing easy access to more resources. Naturally, a mechanism to slow down the asteroids was also implemented to pre prevent the asteroids ac accidental asteroid in strikes. As the Incipius mastery of space flight grew, grew, so did the generator's efficiency, which allowed for more compact ship-based tractor beams. Resource collection was greatly streamlined by these new models, much to the benefit of the incipious, otherwise sluggish ships. The secret of how these beams work is only known to a few scientists of the incipious who are under control of the state. Such knowledge, if made public, could have disastrous consequences for the Hic Hicemus. Maybe it's like a whatever. Oh, I need a Hicemus conflict license. Okay. So this is slowing damage, right? Shield and slowing damage. And hull damage, so it's it's minor. Okay, so it's like a. Here we go. What is this? Shield technology is one of the most recent developments of the Incipius. While this shield appears similar to human shield devices, it works on a completely different basis. In its core, hydrogen is burned, providing energy for regeneration. This proved so effective that it became the main power source of all their ships. Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> Okay, so it, can, it consumes fuel, and it generates energy. So this also generates energy, just bigger. Okay, anything more? Here we go. <clears throat> Hydrogen energy storage was discovered early by the Incipius because of the great amount of metallic hydrogen on their homeworld. 
Because incipient sh ships usually access their energy at the time it's produced, only a small amount of storage is needed. Most of the ships have only one cell installed as a consequence. Okay. Why is this like, why is the yellow sun reactor stretched, the image? And the blue sun is not. So something sums up with the yellow sun reactor's image. I got this afterburner that I keep forgetting I have. All right, let's see what this, let's see what the, okay, so that, the abundance of metallic hydrogen on the incipient planet has led to the development of engines that utilize the potential, allowing for more efficient thrusters than might be given the incipient short history of space flight. Okay. 118 and 806. Yeah, I mean, like, pretty, I mean, it's a lot better. It also generates a ton of heat. Although this generates a ton of heat. Maybe not a ton, but a lot. But it's also cheap. I don't know. Let's see what the hand, oh, cloud piercer, what is this? Look at that, yeah, cloud piercer. When it comes to close combat, the incipients are formidable opponents. This brutal weapon may not be the best to invade another ship with, but when it comes to defending, it is quite literally shreds enemies. I need a conflict license for that. Okay. And then here's all the other stuff. Okay. Now, so I'm assuming I need, so I don't need a, a license for this. Do I need one for this? No. So I need one for this. Okay. All right, I guess the next thing is to, I guess, buy a ship. I, I don't think I can. I can't buy that one. I can buy this one, though. Or I, I buy a transporter. Do I buy the transporter? See, this question. Where's the bunk space? 72 bunks, sure. Light freighter, 14 bunks, okay. 10 bunks. See, I could buy this little, little transport, and it's got outfit space free, so I can actually put. I mean, I could buy this little ship and see what it, because these other ships are not going to be worth it anyway. And this cost is like so much cheaper. That's just so many bunks. <laughs> It's also very expensive. I'm going to buy it. Because why not? In, whoa, whoa, whoa. Incipious transporter. Er. Boom. No hyperdrive, of course. Well, let's outfit it with a hyperdrive. There you go. Hyperdrive. Boom. How much fuel do you got? 200, that's enough for one jump. Outfit space free. All right, how much cargo space? Not much. All right, so we're only going to go one jump, one or two. Well, we'll have to give it. Yeah, whatever. We'll keep refueling it. All right, let's go. It's over here, right? Here, here. Here. Uh, wait, do I need to make this my ship? Wait, wait, let's go back. Okay, hold on a second. Ah, whatever, let's just see. Because, like, if, it's, if I'm not running it, I don't think I can actually, like, land on this planet. I can't land on it. I can't, I don't even remember if that was the actual, that was the actual one. I think it was, because I don't think it was down here. Well, let's uh, load this back up. Where's the incipious transporter? All the way back up. Where'd it go? How do I move this so fast? Isn't there like a way? Ugh, whatever. Put that there. Okay, so now, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, what a ship. Good stuff. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh my. 
now I can land on it. Okay. Somebody, somebody like, somebody help me here. Whatever, let's go land on this and then we'll see what's up. I got your transport here, coming in. Coming in to help you out. Oh, let me turn real slow. Okay. Here we go. Your ship dives into the clouds of the gas giant, entering an environment on a scale you have never experienced before. Gas giant clouds tower like castles, sometimes opening to a similarly large caverns of air. Whirlwinds brush through the atmosphere like pillars holding the sky. Though the winds are brutal, your ship glides through them as if they had no effect on it at all. Activating your scanners, you look for the stranded ship from before. Soon a small blip appears on your radar and you maneuver your ship to its location. The stranded ship appears looking even worse off than the first time. The storm seemed to have damaged some of the hull and its shields are completely down. The shield generator could have gone, off, gone offline when they ran out of fuel. Any attempt to hail the incipient ship results in no answer. Carefully, you maneuver your own ship closer until you are able to dock with it. When the airlock opens, you see five Incipius floating in front of you. Noticing your presence, they quickly back off. They were clearly not expecting a human piloting one of their very own ships. It takes them a moment to recognize you from the previous encounter as you prepare your translation device to speak with them. I'm going to say I have been sent by your people to get you home, not I'm coming to save you. The Incipius seem to switch from a tense state to a surprise one, and one of them starts pulsating. You light our language? How surprising. We would not have survived another day moment here. You are our life protector. We would love to talk more, but a weather calamity is coming. We should leave now. The lack of emotion in the translation is concerning given the content of this message. You tell them to board your ship. Shortly thereafter, you take off. Luckily, you leave just in time to avoid another powerful windstorm approaching the area. All right, now somebody's got to, like, help me. Uh, uh, you. Thank you. Okay, good. Let's do this. See, now I can land on that other thing, too. See, now I can land on the gas giant. Oh my god, hurry up. <laughs> Once you land on the station, your passengers thank you again and leave probably to get some well-earned rest. As you step out of the Incipius transporter, another Incipius approaches you. Its scales seem worn down, and you notice intricate claw-like attachments around the end of its tentacles. Follow me, outer helper, before a crowd gathers. We would like to talk. They guide you through the hallways so you avoid larger groups, though they choose only horizontal corridors. You arrive in a large room with a view over the entire station, with three Incipius already present. One begins to glow. Welcome. We are the leader governors of the Hecamus. Hissimus? The reigning government of the Incipius. If you agree, we would like to ask you a few question queries. In return, we would be open for question queries as well. Sure, ask me something. A green glow appears in all of them. Thank you for taking the time, patience, to speak with us. Can you tell us more about the deep space void surrounding us? Um, I don't want to give them an exhaustive story. I'm going to give them a rough overview of what you have seen. After seeing your explanation, a rapid-fire sequence of colors is exchanged between the Incipius. Your translator cannot follow, so you're left watching them flash in what ended up being yellow tones mixed with green and red. Thank you for this insight. All we gathered until now was by observing studying stars. To think there's so much out there, it truly raises, strengthens the determination to explore. But now to you, is there anything you would like to know? Uh, let's see here. Why I'm going to say, like, why do you call the station your capital? The one pulsating now takes on a bright green color. This station is our greatest action pride, our star bridge. 
In honor of our urge to expand, we made this station our capital to demonstrate our determination. How was life on a gas? Okay, well, apparently that's the last thing. What an odd, reasonable question. Its glow turns to a swirl of purple and green. We could ask in the same return, what is it like to live on hard rock? But we understand its reasoning origin. So let me tell you of the cloud halls of our home sky. Lightning will draw the most beautiful color sings between the pillar clouds. Between them are our cities, the most color lifeful places you will ever see. This is a bit of poetic gradient description, but I do not know what else to say. Thank you again for your time. You have given us much to process. We hope you two have benefited from this meeting talk. You say goodbye, and as you leave the room, you can see a rush of colors reflecting on the walls. Well, that was uh, first contact with the Incipius. Again, the Quarg had to step in again and say, like, you know, you got to watch yourself. But at least they gave a translator on this one. They did not do the same for the Gegno so far. We'll see if that actually happens. I'm not sure if there's anything more to the Incipius mission chains, but we'll check it out on the next set. So hit that subscribe button because we're getting into some really, really good content in this game. The last patch added a whole bunch of new content. And you know what? You got to keep those suggestions flying because I didn't even realize that this system existed that was north of the Corsestor. So keep them coming. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.